Hello, my name is Alexa Duncan. I am a librarian in Buncombe County. Buncombe County Public Libraries are offering a series of training videos on computer basics. And today we're going to be starting with our first session, Getting to Know Your Computer. These computer basics training videos assume that you haven't used a computer before and you're getting started from the, for the very first time. So let's go. So first let's start with what is a computer? So of course we have a picture here of what most people think of as a computer. It's that machine that sits on your desk. Um, it may look like this or may look like a laptop. But really a computer is any kind of electronic device that stores and then helps us access data and information. So that might be a computer like the one that you're looking at right now on your screen, but it also might be something like an ATM or a smartphone. Um, so a lot of times when I give this class in person, it turns out that people actually are a little bit more familiar with computers than they think they are because we interact with them every day. So I also want to introduce you to two different words, um, two different terms that you probably hear pretty often when you hear people talking about computers. The first one is hardware. So computer's hardware is any kind of physical part of the computer that you can touch. It might be the mouse or the screen or the keyboard. All of those things are hardware. Software is stuff that makes the computer run that you can't touch. Software is the digital instructions that tell the computer what to do. So for example, um, Microsoft Word is an example of software. That's a pretty common one that a lot of people have used. So let's talk a little bit about the different parts of a computer. What I have here on this screen is a picture of a pretty typical desktop computer. It has a screen, which you're probably using to view this video right now. It has something called a CPU, that stands for Central Processing Unit. You don't have to remember CPU or Central Processing Unit, just know that that's the part of the computer that works as sort of the computer's brain. That's where it does all of the processing of information that you're putting into it and then trying to get out of it on the screen. And then computers usually have a keyboard, which you can type on, and a mouse, which you can use to um, interact with the computer and tell it where, what you want to look at and where on the page. We're gonna be talking about all of these elements in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But first I wanted to show you um, that a laptop uh, actually has all of those same components as a desktop computer. It has a screen, just like a desktop computer, a keyboard, a mouse pad um, instead of a mouse, but it works in pretty much the same way. And then it also has a CPU. It's just that it's tucked underneath that keyboard and very small and compact um, so that you're not usually looking at it when you're looking at a laptop and it folds up into a small space. So a laptop computer has all of those same components, just much more compact. Let's talk a little bit about the keyboard. What I have here is a pretty typical keyboard that you would see when using a desktop computer um, and probably pretty typical to a laptop too. The only difference that you might see is on the right hand side there is a number keypad and sometimes since laptops are trying to be more compact they won't include that um, as part of their keyboard. They'll just have the portion on the left with the letters and um, directional keys and things like that. So let's talk about the keyboard in a little bit more detail and some specific keys that you might want to be familiar with. So the first two keys that I'd like to talk to you about are the escape button and the enter button. So the enter key is probably the one that you're going to use most often. And there are two main ways that you're going to use it. If you're typing in a program like Microsoft Word and you hit enter, what that does is it takes you down to the next line and you can begin typing a new paragraph. If you hit enter while you are 
for example, online, um, usually what that does is that tells your computer that it's time to go. So if you are, for example, doing a search for something and you hit enter, it will start the search. So basically what the enter key does is it carries out any kind of command that you've just given the computer. It does whatever the last thing is that you told it to do. The escape key, on the other hand, will help you get out of something that you don't want to be in. So for example, if you're on a screen or in a program that you don't want to be in, you're not really sure how you got there and you can't figure out how to get out, the escape key is just a quick way to exit out of that screen. So if you ever get stuck, try hitting the escape key. Um, it may not solve your problem, but it's always a good thing to, to try to do. Next, I want to talk about the backspace and delete keys. So both of these keys do pretty much the same thing. They erase something that you've typed. The only difference is the backspace key will erase everything to the left of where your cursor is blinking. So it will go backwards um, erasing things. And the delete key will, will erase everything to the right of where your cursor is blinking. So it goes forward. So both of those do something very similar, um, just some slightly different ways of doing the same thing. Next, your Control, Alt, and Shift keys. I've put these together because they do something very similar. And the clue to what they all do is actually in that, the name of that Alt key. Alt stands for alternate. And so what all of these keys do is when you hold them down and use them in combination with another key, they give you some alternate options. So for example, on the Shift key, which is probably the one of these that you're gonna use the most often, if you hold that down and then you type a letter, you get an uppercase version of that letter instead of a lowercase version. Next, let's talk about caps lock and number lock. These are also both very similar. What caps lock does is it locks your keyboard into a mode where it just types capital letters. Um, and so sometimes I'll see people who, instead of hitting shift, holding down shift, and then hitting a letter to get an uppercase letter, they will hit that caps lock whenever they wanna type um, an uppercase letter. It's totally fine to do that. It won't hurt anything. In the long run, it is usually a little bit faster to teach your fingers how to hold down the shift key and then a letter key to type a capital. But um, also, if you want to type a whole sentence in capital letters, then um, caps lock is definitely your friend. Number lock does something very similar. Um, it turns on and off this keypad on the right hand side of the screen. So if you want to use that keypad and you come to the computer and you're trying to type and it's just not working, um, check and see if number lock is turned off or on. Try tapping that letter, a little light should come on um, nearby it and um, then you should be able to use that keypad. Okay, next let's talk about these cursor controls. So basically what these do is they're like arrow keys and they help you move up and down, left and right along the page um, in the direction that they're pointing. So for example, if you um, tap on that top one, it will take you up the page. If you type on the one below it, it will take you down. Um, left will take you left, right will take you right. And um, so you can also do basically that same thing by using your mouse or your scroll bar, which we'll talk about more a little bit later. Um, but if you're reading a long page of text, sometimes that cursor control can be um, a good easy way to move up and down the page. All right, so we all know practice makes perfect. Um, so here are some websites that you can go to to practice your typing. www.typingclub.com, 
www.learntyping.org and www.typing.com slash student slash lessons. So if you put those addresses into your web browser, those should take you to some websites where you can practice typing. Next, we're going to talk about the mouse. So I have an, two different examples here of different mice or mouses. <laughs> and um, so the one on the left you'll see is a wired mouse. It's connected to the computer by a wire and that's how it communicates with the computer. The one on the right is a wireless mouse. And basically what that one does is it is also connected to the computer and communicates with it. It just communicates um, without that wire in the same way that like a Bluetooth speaker works. Um, it connects over that short distance without any wires and they talk to each other. Technology is amazing. So one thing that you'll notice about these mice is that they have a few common features. So they each have a button on the left and right hand side of the mouse. And then you'll see that the one on the right has a wheel. These are all pretty common features of a mouse. Sometimes you'll see one without a wheel. Um, but next what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about what each of those features does. But first, just really briefly, let's go over the best way to hold a mouse. What you want to do is you don't want to grip your mouse very tightly um, or press down very hard. You want to rest your hand lightly over the mouse. You want your pointer finger over that left hand button, your middle finger over that right hand button, and then your thumb and other fingers just along the side. And then you can rest your wrist on the table or on the mouse pad. And so you just want to move um, your mouse very gently around. Um, you can slide it around and practice seeing how that goes. Um, just, you know, think about, think about it like you're holding an, a hard boiled egg on the table. Um, you don't have to be super gentle, but you don't want to press down really hard either, um, because what that would do is then you would start pushing buttons. So next I want to talk about these different mouse buttons and that wheel. So that left button is the one that you're going to use the most often. You're going to click on that one with your pointer finger. And so what this one does is it's the one that you use when you want to select something, um, when you want to uh, click in a field that you want to type in. About 80% of the time you're going to be using that um, left button that you click with your pointer finger. The wheel is in the middle and basically um, what that will do if your mouse has a wheel is it will help you move quickly up and down the page, um, sort of in the same way that those directional arrows that we were talking about earlier worked. If your mouse doesn't have a wheel, um, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, just it's an extra feature that some of them do have. And then um, the right hand button opens up additional options. You're going to click that one using your middle finger and you'll see that it, you know, for example, if you're in a Word document, it will open up additional options like letting you copy something um, or paste something. Um, so if you have some time to practice using your mouse, um, just go click that right hand button and see if it gives you some different options that appear on the page. A lot of people also want to know how their mouse works. So underneath their, the mouse there is going to be either a roller ball on older mice or an infrared light on newer ones. And so what both of those do are they help tell the computer which direction your mouse is moving in and therefore what you're trying to point at on the screen. So when you move your mouse, you'll see a cursor on your screen, which is usually, um, it usually starts as an arrow um, image. And you move your mouse around and you can see that arrow moving around as well.
So let's talk about that cursor a little bit more and some of the shapes that it's going to make. Like I said, um, it usually starts out with an arrow shape. That's the most common one. And basically that one just tells you where on the page you are. You can use it to point to things on a menu, um, click options and things like that, and select things. Um, but for the most part, the arrow is just telling you where on the page your cursor is. When you move your cursor over something that you can select, it will turn into a pointing finger. So that means that um, the thing that you have your mouse over at that moment is maybe a link to a web page. It's something that you can interact with. After you click an option, um, sometimes you'll see an hourglass or it might be a turning wheel. And what that means is that you have selected something and the computer is thinking about what you've just told it to do and processing that and getting ready to do it. So if you're, that hourglass is, is showing up or that wheel is turning, um, just be patient, give the computer a second, let it finish what it's doing, and then it will take you on to the next thing. Another thing that you might see is the I beam. It looks like a capital letter I. And generally what that means is that you're in a place on the page where you can type. So for example, in Microsoft Word, almost all of the areas um, in that program are a place where you can type because it's intended to let you type a letter or something like that. Um, but if you're on the internet, you might see that in a field where you're supposed to put in your name or your email address or phone number. It's just letting you know that that's an area where you can type. You might also see um, an option that looks like a double arrow, an arrow aligned with um, arrows on both sides of it. And it may be pointing left and right like the one that I've got there, but it also could be pointing up and down. And so what that one is going to do is it's telling you that you can change the size of the window that you're looking at. You can click it and drag it to make it smaller or larger, depending on what you'd like. So to go along with that, there are several actions that you can do with a mouse. Um, the one, again, that you're going to do the most frequently is you're going to point with it. Um, you move the cursor over the thing that it, you want to select or see. You're also going to click, which means pressing lightly and then letting up with either your pointer or your middle finger, depending on what you want. Um, so, you know, anytime you see click, in a set of instructions, that's what it means. It usually means to press down quickly on that left button with your pointer finger. You might also see instructions to double click. And so what that means is that you're gonna tap that same button, that left button, twice quickly in a row. That takes a little bit of practice um, to get used to, but um, you, I promise you will get it <laughs> after a little while. Um, so to tap that one two times quickly, and most often that one is used to open up a new program. One that we talked a lot about a little bit earlier is that right click. That's telling you to, to press and then release that right button. And again, like we, talk, we talked about earlier, it opens up some additional options for you. Um, like it says here, some shortcut menus and things like that. So if you see right click, that's what it's talking about. It wants you to click that right button using your middle finger. You can also click and drag something. And so basically what that means is that you can hold down that left hand button. You move your mouse over the thing that you want to drag. You push down on that left hand button and then without letting up, you move your mouse and move that item over to a new place. I use that most often when I want to put something in the trash can on my computer. So I might have, you know, downloaded a photo that I just needed very quickly to take a look at, but I don't want to keep it for good. So I have it on my desktop and I just drag it over 
into the recycling bin to get rid of it. You can also use that same function to highlight something. So for example, if you're in Microsoft Word and um, you have a paragraph and you want to move it or you want to change the color of it or copy and paste it into a new document, you can do that same thing. You can click again with the left hand um, button and then drag it to the end of the section that you want to copy and then let go. And then at that point, it'll be highlighted and you can copy it and paste it. Okay, again, here are some great websites where you can practice. Um, there's one called www.3street.org slash mouse, www.pbclibrary.org slash mousing, www.seniornet.org slash how to slash mouse exercises slash mouse practice HTML. So if you type in any of those, those will take you to some great websites where you can practice using your mouse. Okay, so the next part of the computer that I want to talk about is your desktop. You've probably heard people use this word before. Your desktop is just that first screen that you see when you turn on your computer. And everybody's computer is gonna look a little bit different depending on how the person who organizes the computer, uh, who owns the computer has organized it. This, for example, is a screenshot of a desktop at on one of the library computers. And so you can see we have some common programs that people like to use on the desktop, and then also some links to websites that people like to use pretty often. Um, so your desktop will usually have some of these icons like that on there, um, but it may look a little bit different just depending on what the person who owns the computer's preference is. So the best way to think about a desktop um, to make it make sense is to think about it like you're looking down at a physical desk from above and all of these little things that are on the desktop are supplies that you might need really frequently. So on a computer desktop, it might be that recycling bin or Microsoft Word, um, whereas on a physical regular desktop, it might be a cup of pens or a calculator or a ruler. Just anything that you might need most frequently is usually something that you, want, you might want to have on the desktop. That doesn't mean that that's everything that the computer has in it, just that those things are stored away in the computer, um, just like you would store things away in drawers in a regular desk. So I just used the word icons. Um, icons are these small pictures that you see on a desktop and they represent things that you might want to open. Those things might be computer programs, um, which you might also hear called apps, uh, which is short for applications. They might be documents or they might be folders. And usually what you want to do to open up any of these items, any of these icons, is to double click on them. However, like I was saying before, um, just because something isn't on the desktop doesn't mean that it isn't on the computer. It just means that it's stored away. And the way that you sort of open those drawers and get to the things that you want on your computer is you go down here to the Start button. So think about clicking on that Start button in the bottom left-hand corner as opening up your desk drawer. So when you click on that Start button, then you want to go to an option that says all programs. And you'll see that there, right above where I have that arrow, all programs, I'm right above that little field where you can do a search. And so when you click on all programs, it will open up a list of all of the programs and things on your computer. So you'll see a combination of programs and you'll also see these little yellow file folders. And when you see a little yellow file folder like that, what that means is there's more stuff inside of it. So for example, um, 
on this example that I have on the screen in the Microsoft Office file folder, you'll see there are all kinds of different Microsoft programs. So Microsoft Word, Microsoft Publisher, PowerPoint, and so on. The other thing that this start button does is it gives you the option to turn your computer on and off. So you'll see when I've clicked on that start button um, and we look a little bit over to the right of where we were talking about before, there's an option to shut down. So let's also talk about the taskbar, which is on the desktop. Where this is, is at the very bottom of that desktop page. You'll see that start button on your left, and then to the right of that start button, you'll see some other options. So for example, on, on this example, I have um, first the start button, then Internet Explorer. Um, you'll see those file folders. That is all of the computer's documents. Just a quick um, way to get there. Um, Real Player, which uh, plays music and videos on a Microsoft computer. Um, Google Chrome. And then you'll see um, we have Microsoft Word there. So basically what this taskbar does is it's a place where you can keep really frequently used programs and it also displays programs that are currently open. Um, and the way that you can tell whether the program is open or not is it will have a faint square around it. So in this example that I have on this page, you can see that Microsoft Word is open. And the way you can tell that is that it has that faint square around it. None of those others are open because they don't have that square. Okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about are windows. When you open up a program or you open a document, um, what it opens in is called a window. It's that area that I have surrounded in red on the page. It's that big area that lets you see other things on the window. And so then each window has its own set of controls. So let's talk about that in a little bit more depth. So the most common types of controls that you're going to see in almost all kinds of windows that open are close, which is that X button, minimize, maximize, which is that one in the middle that looks like two windows. Basically what that one does is it makes your window smaller or larger. And then also that flat line is one that allows you to shrink that down to the taskbar. So let's say you have several different programs open and you don't want to close them completely because you're still using them, but you want to look at one rather than another. So the current program that you're in, you click that, um, that flat line to shrink it down to the taskbar. So it will sit there open in the taskbar and you can go back to the taskbar to open it later when you need it. Um, but it's not open and so you don't have to look at it. You can look at something else. And then the last thing um, that is really common in pretty much all types of windows is a scroll bar. Um, this example that I have on the page is going up and down, but it could go left and right as well. And you use that scroll bar and the arrows on it um, to move up and down on the page. Thank you so much for listening to this training program brought to you by Buncombe County Public Libraries. For more information about our programs and resources, visit www.buncombecounty.org.